human being should have a belief. This is something built within you, you cannot get rid of it. So the most important thing in this life is the Iman. Allah has promised those who believe, Allah is going to make them successors on earth. But there is a condition. If you don't make shirk, so this is the importance of the Iman. So the Iman is the most important element. Inshallah, Sheikh Salem Al Amri will be giving a talk entitled Let's Revive Our Iman. Just a bit of background information about the Sheikh. Sheikh Salem Al Amri comes from the United Arab Emirates. By profession, he's a computer engineer. However, he has spent a major part of his youth studying under different scholars. And if you were to see, I have a list here just of the names of those scholars. I think we'd be here for quite some time if I was to mention them all. Suffice it to say that he has studied under some of the greatest scholars of our time quite extensively. The Sheikh has taken an effort to obtain knowledge under the different sciences of Islam, including Aqidah, Usul, Hadith, Fiqh, Tafsir, Arabic language, and much more. So inshallah, I'd like to invite again Sheikh Salem Al-Amri to give his talk, which is entitled, Let's Revive Our Iman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hadihu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina. ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد brothers and sisters in Islam our talk for today is about let us revive our iman may Allah عز وجل strengthen our iman Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith and it in Sahih al-Jama' by Imam Suyuti authenticated by our Shaykh Nasr al-Din al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna al-imana la yakhlaqu fi jawfi ahadikum كما يخلق الثوب فاسألوا الله أن يجدد إيمانكم the meaning verily إيمان gets old in one's breast just like the new cloth it becomes shabby so ask Allah to help you and ask Allah to renew your Iman in your hearts. And based on this hadith, we plead to Almighty Allah, O oh Allah, we beg you, O oh Allah, we ask you by your divine names and attributes to strengthen our Iman. Amen. Iman, my dear brothers and sisters, is the most important thing in this life. The belief is inherent characteristics of any human being. Without the belief, you cannot move one step forward. Every human being should have a belief. Even the atheist himself, he has a belief. 
and the belief, so this is something built within you, you cannot get rid of it. For instance, if you don't believe that the water will quench your thirst, you will not drink the water when you are thirsty. True or not? So you have to believe that this particular fluid will quench my thirst. So when you feel thirsty, you rush to the bridge and you take water. If you don't believe that the food will kill and remove the pangs of hunger within you, you will not go and look for food. But because you believe that if you eat, that hunger will disappear and vanish. Are you following brothers and sisters? These are basic things. If you don't believe that the fire burns by God's permission, you will not run away from the fire. God forbid. If something happened, no one will remain in his seat. Everyone will run away because everyone knows and believes that the fire burns. Are you following? Say, so see. So the belief is something built within you, you cannot get rid of it. So every human being has to believe. Is this clear? Now. So the most important thing in this life is the Iman. And the Iman, by the way, I was going to know, is not only the belief itself, it is something else. But it is the most precious thing, the most valuable thing in one's life. And any sensible person, when he owns something valuable, where does he keep it? Outside the house? On the road? On the pavement? Where do you keep it? Or inside under the lock and many locks? Or maybe in the bank? Because it is so valuable. True or not? The most valuable thing in your life is your Iman. So you need to protect this Iman from the thieves. Who are the thieves that are going to steal your Iman? Who's the biggest thief? Satan is the biggest thief. And then the followers of the Satan who work around the clock to steal this Iman, the most valuable thing in the life of the human being. That's why the companions, that's why the Sahaba, they were very concerned and very worried about their Iman. And they would tell each other, Da'na nu'min sa'a. The Sahaba, they used to tell each other, let us sit down for one hour to renew our Iman. Do we do that? No. Do we ask each other, Oh brother, how is your Iman? No. The moment we meet each other, How are you brother? How's life? How's family? How's work? That's it. We don't ask each other, How is your Iman brother? How is your Iman sister? No, that is not in our life. And then we start to dream. We want Firdaus al-A'la. We want to be established on earth. And we carry on uttering and, and shouting empty slogans when there is no Iman. No, that's not. Allah says, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفْ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ 
This is what Allah is saying. Allah has promised those who believed. It's a promise from Allah. Does Allah break His promise? Well, Allah Well, if the promise is not fulfilled, what is wrong here? When Allah doesn't break His promise, that means something wrong, went wrong with us. With us. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَةِ Those who believed, and what else? Wa. There is something else, not only belief. There is amal. And did righteous deeds. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَةِ So Iman always, awl and amal together. It's not that you talk about it, no. Actions. Because nowadays, many Muslims, brothers and sisters, everyone is saying Iman is where? Heart. Everyone taps his heart. Sister, where is the hijab? Sister, where is the... Now that everything, everyone taps his heart. One of our mashayikh was discussing with another Muslim. So every question he asked him, he said, the heart. Islam here, Iman, everything in the heart. Finally, he said, where is your beard? He said, even the beard in the heart, imagine. What time is this? This is the dumb guard. <laughs> the guard be bad. Even the beard in the heart. No. We deceive ourselves. So Allah says, Allah promised those who believe and did righteous deeds. Allah is going to make them successors, khulafa on earth. As he made successors before them. And he's going to establish for them their deen on earth. Which he has chosen for them, alhamdulillah. This deen of Islam is going to prevail. We have no doubt about that. No single corner, no single house on the globe will remain without a Muslim individual in it. This is the prophecy. This is Allah's decree. And when Allah decrees a matter, it is going to pass. No one can stop it. And alhamdulillah, despite the weakness of the Muslims, Islam is spreading quickly. This is one of the miracles of this deen. Because Allah, he said, I am the one who is going to make this deen supreme and prevail over any other belief. So this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish the deen on the earth. These are promises from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَا يُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا Allah is going to substitute and they replace the fear and the anxiety we have in our heart with security and peace. These are promises. Are you following? These are promises by Allah. But there is a condition. There is what? Condition. يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيَا These, the four mentioned things, will be fulfilled only if you don't make shirk. You don't associate any partner with me. You worship no one but Allah. Are you following? Then and only then what Allah promised is going to be fulfilled. So this is the importance of the Iman. So the Iman is the most important element. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا 
don't feel weak. How do you feel, brothers and sisters? You feel stronger, you feel uh, strong? Alhamdulillah. See? The Ummah today is passing through this phase where they are under pressure. So Allah says, don't feel weak. Your morale, your morale should stay high. Don't feel weak. Because our strength comes from Allah Azza wa Jal. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Neither feel weak, nor grieve. Don't grieve. Because whatever happens to you Muslims is khair. Is khair. Because Allah loves you and Allah will only test whomever He loves. You have to take that into consideration. And sometimes the only way to bring you Muslims to the state part is through the lashes. Allah knows. So He has to lash you because you have digressed and deviated from the straight path. So you have to come. Then these calamities and trials and tribulations should bring you on to the right path. And which is true. Which is true. Many, many Muslim places, people they were not praying, people, they, women they were not wearing hijab, but because of the calamities, MashaAllah, oh Allah, oh Allah. And that is khair. So whatever happens to the Muslim is khair. Because there is a divine wisdom behind it. So Allah is saying, وَلَا تَهِنُوا Don't feel weak. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Or grieve. وَأَنْتُمْ الْأَعْلَوْنَ Who's saying this? Allah. You are going to have the other hand, you Muslims. وَأَنْتُمْ الْأَعْلَوْنَ But there is a condition again. What is the condition? إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ you are going to have the upper hand when you have the Iman. So everything is conditioned. So we have to work hard in building our Iman. Having said this, my dear brothers and sisters, what is the definition of Iman? What is the definition of Iman? This is the following definition given by the Muslim theologians according to the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that means Sahaba, Tabi'een, Tabi'i, Tabi'een the definition of Iman Qawlun bil Lisan Wa'atiqadun bil Janan Wa'amalun bil Jawarihi wal Arkan يَزِيدُ بِالطَّاعَةِ وَيَنْقُصُ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ Anyone memorized it? Anyone Muhammad bin Ismail Bukhari here? Okay. The definition of Iman نُطْقُمْ بِالْلِسَانِ Utterance upon the tongue. So first of all, a brother wants to become a Muslim. We have to tell him, you know what Islam is about? You believe in God, in one God. You believe in the oneness of Allah. You believe in all the messengers. You believe all these things to explain to him. So he said, yes, I accept that. So that is conviction. Something now in his heart. So now he has to express it. He has to express it. He has to utter. He has to proclaim that what is in his heart is now going to be public to everyone. Because what is in your heart, we don't know about it. So you have to announce it. So that's why nutqum bil lisan. You have to pronounce and you have to utter. That is one component. So iman consists of how many components? Three. Nutqum bil lisan, utterance upon the tongue. Wa'tiqadun bil janan, and conviction in the heart. The belief, something in the heart. And that's why we call what is in the heart aqeedah. We call it what? Aqeedah. Why do we call it aqeedah? From the word, Arabic word, Aqada. Aqada means what? 
Have you seen what I've done? Not. This is called uqda. Not. That means aqada. That means these sets of belief are tied well in the heart firmly. So that's the conviction. That is what? The conviction. So that's the second component. وَعَمَلٌ بِالْجَوَارِحِ وَالْأَرْكَانِ And actions by the limbs. Action by the limbs. Salah. You have to get up and pray. Hajj. You have to go to Makkah. Siyam. You have to stop from eating and drinking. So these are action by the limbs. So how many components are there? What are they? What are the components, the elements of Iman? Oh. Utterance and then? No, no. Utterance and? Conviction. And? Actions. There are three elements. Now, to make it simple, we'll put it in mathematical formula. Iman equal utterance multiplied by conviction multiplied by action the product is the iman simple so this is the definition of the iman there is a reason why i put it in the mathematical formula you will know it now what will happen these three the utterance is fixed or variable is it constant or variable utterance the utterance constant or variable no, it is variable. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha lallah, allahu akbar, astaghfirullah, la ilaha lallah. Is it constant? It is variable. So the, whatever you utter is not fixed. So that's why in Ramadan, what happened to the utterance? Gets lesser or more. So what happens to the iman? Ah, mashallah, you know now. So now, because of the dhikr, because of the istighfar, because of reading the Qur'an, you feel, mashallah, your iman is shooting up, is rising. Why? Because now, one element of the iman is increasing. So the product will increase. Are you, is this clear? Now, take the second, the conviction. Is it fixed? The aqidah. Is it fixed? or variable it is fixed and variable how it is fixed in the sense that this you believe in the angels so you will not one day you believe in the angels one day you believe in the angel the other day you say no I don't believe in the angels right so it is fixed but it is variable that the more evidence you learn about the deed, the stronger the, the conviction. So it is valuable from that perspective. The more knowledge you get, the stronger that not becomes. Are you following me? For instance, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhiyil mawta. Oh Allah, Show me how you give life to the dead. Allah said, Awalam tu'min? Haven't you believed? So Ibrahim said, alayhi salam, the father of all the prophets, Rabbi Arini, oh my Lord, show me. How you give life to the dead? Okay? Allah said, Haven't you believed, O oh Ibrahim? He said, Yes, I believe. But I want more surety. More certainty. More. There is a belief, but he wants more. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَخُذْ أَرْبَعَةً مِنَ الطَّيْرِ Take, O oh Ibrahim, four birds. Four pigeons. And cut them. You cut the pigeons. And then distribute the flesh, the meat of the pigeons, the doves, on the mountains around you. Subhanallah. Listen, try to imagine this. 
The pigeons are cut into different parts. Some narration says, and he kept the heads of the pigeons in his hands, the heads. And he distributed the meat on the mountains around him. Then Allah told him, Call them. Call the pigeons and they will come fluttering the wings. Now, after this, when he saw the pigeons came into life, do you think the iman before the same as the iman after? It will be the peak. The peak. So even the iman itself, the conviction, can also increase. Can also what? Increase. That's why the iman of the alim, the scholar, is not like the iman of the layman. For instance, we believe that there is torture and punishment in the grave. The layman, he doesn't know the details, what is going to happen to him exactly. But the alim, the scholar, knows. So the iman will not be the same. And embryologist, he sees how the child is formed from when it is just a drop of semen and through the process of the fertilization and then when the limbs start to form and he is tracing all these stages of the formation of the embryo and he's a Muslim is this doctor Muslim Muslim doctor his iman will be just like the layman who did not see it with his own eyes no so this Muslim doctor when he reads the Quran and the ayat about embryology, and he knows exactly, his iman will be stronger than the iman of any layman or any ordinary Muslim. Are you following, brothers and sisters? Okay, fine. Now, so now we know that action utterances can increase, right? Conviction also can increase. Let me give you another example. In schools, if you know how to solve mathematical problem with only one method and another student he knows how to solve it with two methods another one with three or four methods getting arriving at the same answer so if I know how to solve this problem by four methods is there a chance that I might forget all the four methods or the five methods it's very less right but if I know only one method just ask me after a few months, I don't know. So that means the more evidence and the more ways of knowledge and ways of approaching you have, the stronger the knowledge will remain in your heart. Are you following? So now, alhamdulillah, we know that the utterance increase, conviction increases, and also the action increases. The one who prays only five prayers is his iman like one who prays the five prayers and the nafil prayers and tahajjud prayers. What do you think? The same or different? Different. That's why you, every Muslim, he feels that in Ramadan, his iman increased because his salawat, his actions are increased. Now here, my dear brothers and sisters, I would like to advise myself and yourself. We have to work hard on our Iman. You have to make the tongue busy with the dhikr, with the istighfar. So that's how your Iman will, mashallah, be. You'll feel the sweetness because, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a real sweetness for the Iman. Sweetness in the real sense. Inshallah, we are going to give towards the end examples for those people who had that sweetness in their iman. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant that sweetness to us. Amen. So there is a real sweetness. But this sweetness will not come if this iman is very weak. So your actions should increase. Not only you pray the five prayers, because many Muslims, they say, okay, it is, it, the only fard is the five prayers. And that's it. And they don't pray nafil, the 12 rak'ah where Prophet Muhammad said, He who maintains praying 12 rak'ah in the day and the night, 
Allah will build for him a palace, house in the Jannah. So, you don't want that house in the Jannah? If you want that house in the Jannah, never miss the 12 rak'ah. Two before Fajr, and four before Dhuhr, and two after the Dhuhr, and two after the Maghrib, and two after Isha. So that's how you will increase your Iman, insha'Allah. So now, how can we strengthen our Iman? How to reinforce this Iman, make it strong in our hearts? Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, is the learning. We have to learn our deen. Nowadays, among the Muslims, there is something called religious illiteracy. Religious illiteracy. The people, Muslims, are illiterate about their deen. Though they are PhD holders with the title doctor, but they don't know the deen. So it is high time for us to learn our deen. Without learning the Islam, without learning the deen, the Iman will become weak. Second thing, this book, the Quran, Allah revealed it, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah revealed this book for the Hidayah, for us to contemplate, to ponder, to reflect. Not that we take this Quran and read it in the parrot fashion, without knowing its meaning, no. Get a translation of the Quran in your mother tongue, tafsir, so you know when you are reading what you are reading. Because this book, the Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strengthens the Iman. And you should not desert the Quran. Unfortunately, the Quran has been deserted in the life of Muslims. Not only deserted, it became an evil omen in some Muslim countries. I will not mention names. In some Muslim countries, if, for instance, you open the television and you see only Quran, you say, oh my God, who died? It is an evil omen. Because this time there should not be any Quran. There should be music and dance and all that. But now there is Quran, so there must be something wrong. Someone died. President, king. So that's why they are reading Quran. So it became an evil omen. This is the ummah of the Quran, subhanallah. The third thing that will strengthen your iman is to see the greatness of Allah. Don't you see the greatness of Allah around you? Don't you see yourself? Don't you see this complex body? Don't you see this universe around you? The odor. Everything is in odor. Galaxies and galaxies and galaxies and these celestial bodies are moving around and everything is in order. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused us to reflect. They ponder and reflect upon the creation of Allah. Oh Allah, for sure you didn't create this just for nothing. No. There must be a purpose. As our scholars Tell us, there are two books. The whole creation is one massive book. Read it. And the other book is the Quran. So there are two books. So read, the, see the creation around you. That calls you to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a matter of fact, it builds your iman. It builds your iman. Also, the dhikr. Dhikr. Dhikr, my dear brothers and sisters, is the most important thing. Dhikr to the heart, just like water to the plant. The plant without water, what will happen to it? Will die. The same thing, your heart. No dhikr, your heart will die. So always keep astaghfirullah, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, on the night of Mi'raj, he told the Prophet ﷺ, وَأَخْبِرْ أُمَّتَكْ O Muhammad. This is a message from Ibrahim ﷺ to us. Tell your Ummah that Jannah is Qiyan, is not cultivated yet. There are many parts of the Jannah 
not planted. وَأَنَّ غِرَاسُهَا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ You want to plant trees in the Jannah? Say this, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. Then a tree will be planted for you in the Jannah. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained, he said, one tree in the Jannah, the fastest horse riding the fastest horse will be running for 100 years and will not finish the shade of that tree. 100 years the horse is running, in the shade of one tree, and the trunks of the trees are made of gold. And this tree you can plant by Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. Plant now. Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. So this is the dhikr, the sweetness of the dhikr. So keep your tongue rather than driving on the motorway and you are, mm, 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 you are singing. Huh? Don't you know that in Saudi Arabia, two cars collided into each other, and the people, they rushed to save them. They found one reading the Quran, dying reading the Quran. The other one was singing. Which one you want? Because whatever in your heart will come when you are dying on your tongue. If your heart is not filled with the dhikr and the reading the book of Allah, when you are dying, something else will come out. So the dhikr, my dear brothers and sisters, and the benefits of dhikr are so many. So if you want to strengthen your iman, don't lose the dhikr at all. Also, we should not waste time. Time is life. One of the salaf, his brother was telling him, wait for me, wait for me. He said, hold the sun for me. Can you hold the sun for me? No. The grandfather of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah used to tell his son that when I go to the toilet, my son, I don't want to waste that time. Please read loudly so I can hear the ilm while I am responding to the call of nature. So that time is not lost. Many of the scholars of hadith, they said, to their wives, when you make my food, don't make it solid, make it liquid so I will just gulp it. So I don't have time to chew, to waste. What are we doing? Wasting time, hours and hours in front of the tele, television. What will you ask Allah, what will you answer to Allah when he asks you? How did you spend your life watching television? Watching cricket. That's the answer you are going to give to Allah. Time is your life and he's going to ask you about it. Subhana Rabbil Azim. Also, we should regret, make nadam, make tawbah, as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And nadamu tawbah. Regret is a repentance. Regret for what had happened. And say, inshallah, inshallah from now, my dear brothers and sisters, we make our niyyah that, oh Allah, help us from now on, insha'Allah, we'll not waste time. Insha'Allah, we will benefit, insha'Allah, from every single minute, insha'Allah. And I just conclude with one example. One example of those who tasted the Iman in their hearts. Take the examples of the early Muslims. Yasir and Sumayya. Those are the early martyrs. They became Muslims. And by the way, this is the beauty of Islam. You remember the hadith in Bukhari, the hadith of Herakl, Hercules? When Abu Sufyan, he asked Herakl, the Hercules, asked Abu Sufyan, who believe in him and who follows him? the poor and the needy and the destitute or the rich ones? What did he say? The poor. Why? The oppressed, the, the slaves, the trodden, those who are stepped upon. Why? Because they feel that there is justice. 
They feel that this deen is the true deen that equates between all human beings. So the early Muslims, Yasser and Ammar, and they were experiencing torture. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would just pass by them helpless. He couldn't do anything. The only thing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could do, Sabran ala Yasir, fa inna mawidukum al-jannah. Oh, people of Yasir, be patient. I will meet you where? In the Jannah. Another example, Suhaib, Rumi, radiallahu anhu, when he became a Muslim and then he decided to make Hijrah to Medina, what happened? The Mushriks followed him. And they told him, listen, when you came to Mecca, you were very poor and now and you made money in this in our town and now you want to go with the money he said no the money is there you want the money go and take it I don't want it but let me go to my beloved one to my Prophet Sallallahu and he left the money and he reached Medina Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he saw him he said Rabbi Hal Bay'a Aba Yahya the deal you made oh Suhaib with Allah is profitable and one day he was sitting in Medina with the Sahaba and they were discussing what happened to them in Mecca and then he removed his garment and he showed them his back and it was completely white skin white skin he said what is this he said is this a skin disease they said no 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 I tell you what happened the mushriks in Mecca they removed my clothes and they put me on charcoal, hot charcoal, without any piece of cloth. The only thing that extinguished the fire, the fat of my back. The fat started melting, so that's how. This is what happened. Bilal. They were dragging him in Mecca on the hot sand and dressed in armor, armor, metal. And he said, by Allah and they were asking him say something about our idols he would only say what ahadun ahad ahadun ahad he said by Allah I was mixing the sweetness of ahadun ahad so I feel the sweetness in my heart so that the pain I didn't feel the pain because of the sweetness of ahadun ahad in my heart another example Abdullah ibn Hudafa is one of the Sahaba who was arrested and captured as a prisoner along with many of the Muslims. And the king of the enemies, he wanted to convert him to the disbelief and he failed miserably. He then he told him, I will give you my daughter, I'll get you married and I'll give you half of my kingdom. He said, all this is rubbish. Then he started killing the Sahaba, his companions. And the way they killed the Sahaba, they would drop the Sahabi into massive pots full of boiling oil. And they would lower them into the pot by chains. The moment the body is immersed into the oil, the bones float on the surface. That's what happened to the Sahaba. Do you think this deen reached us easily with our sacrifices? No. Then they took him and he was watching. Then he started to cry. So they thought he started to cry because he got scared, afraid. So they took him back to the king. So oh, you change your mind. Well done. Smart boy. Good. He said, no. So why did you cry then? He said, the reason I cried, I remembered I have only one soul. The moment I am dipped, it's gone. And I wish I have 100 soul will die one after one. Allahu Akbar. This is the Iman. When the king heard that, he said, you know something? I will set you free, but in one condition. You kiss me on my forehead. Kiss me here. 
He said, he thought about it, then he said, I will kiss you on one condition, that you set me free and with the remaining of the Sahaba, my friends, companions. He said, that is for you. He kissed the head of the king and they were set free. And they were received in Medina. Umar bin Khattab received them and he said, listen, I'm going to kiss the forehead of Abdullah ibn Hudhafa and everyone should come and kiss his head. And the Sahaba queued to kiss the head of Abdullah ibn Hudhafa. See the Iman, he said, the only thing that I was thinking of, I wish that I have many, many souls. So I want to die many, many times. Anas ibn al-Nadr, as in Bukhari, on the battle of Uhud, when the Sahaba were defeated, because the archers, they left their position. He said, by Allah, I am smelling the fragrance of the Jannah. I smell the paradise. Imagine a person smelling the Jannah. Yes, they are smelling the fragrance of the Jannah. People of the trench, Ahl al uqdud in Surah Al-Buruj. Those are Christians, by the way, early Christians, early Muslims, early believers who believed in Allah after the miracle when he killed the little boy. And they said, Amanna bi Rabbul Ghulam, we believe in the Lord of the lad and the chap. And they were thrown into that trench which was full of fire. And the mother came, listen to this, a mother came carrying her baby and then she stepped backward because of her child, infant. What happened? The child spoke and said, Mom, yum, we are upon the truth. The child spoke and she jumped with her child into the pit. Take another example. Al Khansa. Al Khansa, she lived before Islam and after Islam, and she was a poet. Poet. And her brother before Islam died, and she composed many poems about him. And she was crying all the time. But after she became a Muslima, after she became a Muslima, she sent all her four children for jihad, for the battlefield, for spreading the word of Allah. And what did she say? She said, I don't want to see any one of you to come back to me alive. I want to see you all in the Jannah, there we will meet, inshallah. So this is, my dear brothers and sisters, the sweetness of the Iman. Only the Iman makes these wonders. No Iman, worshipping the dunya, worshipping idols, the dunya is another idol, worshipping ourselves, whims and desires. You will not achieve that such a status. Jazakumallahu khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I love you all and may Allah strengthen our iman and your iman. Jazakallahu khaira, Sheikh Salim al Amri. Inshallah, we'll have question and answers. Again, we'll be starting from the mic at the front, going to the back, and then to the sisters. Inshallah, we'll continue in that order. So, if there's anyone at the front who'd like to ask, if there is, go ahead, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, yeah, it was a beautiful lecture. Uh, my question is uh, leaving a beard and keeping your pants above the ankles, is that also important to increase your Iman? First of all, is there anything Allah has given us or created for nothing, for no purpose in this universe? There is a wisdom, everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. So Allah, when He gave the man the beard, He didn't give it to the woman, why? This beard, little hairs, they beautify the man, beautify him, make him beautiful. Right, sisters? Do you want your husband to look clean, shaved like you? Or like a hero, lion, real man? What do you prefer? Be honest. I'll tell you what. Back home, this happened. A woman, women were together talking, and then a man passed and he was with respect of the, all the, those brothers who are with be without beards. May inshallah, and this conference is start growing. Say Amin. Okay, Zakmullah khair. He passed by them and they were just, go he, they carried on chatting. Then another brother with beard, 
She said, cover your face, a man is coming. Huh? Cover your face, a man is coming. How about that? You see, the nature. Aisha used to say, by him who beautified the men with the beards. So the beard, my dear brother, will make you look more handsome, believe me. Sheikh, and but, uh, just a counter question. But in uh, Jannat, we don't have beards. No? If that makes you beautiful, in Jannat, we don't have beards. The males will not have beards in Jannat, no? Because they are going to be a young man, man. How young? Uh, less than 15 years? We get beards in 15 years. See, there all the people are very young. Very young without beards in the Jannah. So if you grow the beard now and money, they will say, Akhi, it pokes me. Say, Akhi, don't worry, it's only 50, 60 years maximum, and then, inshallah, you will not have it. So don't worry, wait until then. Okay? <laughs> okay? Now, also, also, I'm sure that sometimes if you grow your beard, someone will come to you, Brother, what happened to you? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, I have seen, I see something. Did any of your relatives pass away or something? No. So what is this? Oh, I see. You mean the little herds here? Don't, you know the answer, I'll give you one answer for them. Don't tell him sunnah and all that, he will start to argue with you. Tell him, you know something, brother? My sweetheart loves it too much. My wife, she's crazy over it. She loves it. So that's why I'm growing it. So this will tell him, keep quiet, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don't criticize me for growing my beard. This is something I grow it to please my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you know the king of Persia was assassinated, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he sent a letter to the emperor of Persia and the emperor sent a command to his governor in Yemen go and arrest Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he sent two men and those two men came to Medina with their mustaches and without beards. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he looked at them and then he turned his face. He said, who commanded you to do this, to shave your beard and grow your mustache? They said, our Lord, they meant the emperor. So inshallah, every Muslim who is with us and every Muslim who inshallah hear this lecture will grow the beard. Just pray for them, brother. Barakallah. What about ankles? Uh, pants above the also ankles? Also the same, the, just raise it one centimeter over your ankle and you'll be on the safe side. So whoever doesn't do it is sinning actually? It is a sin, no doubt. But I am, as a rule of thumb, a rule of thumb for every Muslim, I want you. The ruling of the Sharia are five rulings. The problem we are running out of time. There are five rulings. Haram, Makru, like that. Haram, makru. Fard and sunnah and halal. If something is haram, someone is saying this is haram, someone is saying it's makru, what should you do as a Muslim? Lay man. Do it or leave it. One is saying haram, one is saying makru. Do it or leave it. Leave it. If it is haram, you leave it. If it is makru, you leave it. One alim is saying this is fard, another alim is saying sunnah. What should you do? Leave it or do it? Do it. If it is fard, you do it. If it is sunnah, you do it. What remained halal is halal. You can have, have your dinner or you can leave it. This simple rule please apply. Next question please. Assalamu alaikum. I'm asking this question on the behalf of Sister Sakina. When we are depressed, we are at the lowest of our iman. We don't feel like doing zikr as well. How do we come out of such a situation? Thank you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all remove the depression from the heart of every Muslim. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the marital lives of all Muslims successful. Ameen. Now, if a person is depressed because of problems and this, the zikr and the istighfar is the one of the things that will remove it. Because who will remove this depression and who will remove this suffering except Allah Azza wa Jal. So we have to turn to Allah and take wudu, make wudu and pray to rak'ah and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your, pour your heart to Allah. You have problems with your husband? 
he beats you. And by the way, oh brothers, fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't beat women. Prophet Muhammad is your example. He never beat any of his wives. Never. And he said, those who beat women are not the best among you. So Prophet Muhammad is the example for every man, for every Muslim. So if one sister, her husband is giving her a tough time, only Allah Azza wa Jal can guide him. Get up at night and really from the core of your heart, pray to Allah and cry to Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reform all those husbands. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our lives more successful and happier, inshallah. My name is Abdul Salam. I would like to ask you one question to enrich my iman. This life is a test for hereafter, and I, I agree it. But if we fail, we will get severe punishment. According to me, this is a trap. We are compelled in this test. But according to Quran, in Surah Yasin, Illa rahmatam minna wa mataan ilahi. As I understand, this is a rahmat from Allah. Suppose, because if Allah directly asks me to participate, to, for, uh, directly ask me, do you like to participate in the test, then I say no, because if I file, I, uh, I will get severe punishment. If I am not participating, I, I don't have problem. So according to me, this is a trap. According to Quran, this is a rahmat. Then, would you please explain it? I'm just trying to, you know, to try to understand what you are trying to say. Uh, are you saying that the test in life is a trap? Yes. But the Quran is saying it is rahmah. Oh. Okay, good. Now, you know, for justice, in order for justice to be established, things should be treated equally. Now, is it just if the teacher treats all these pupils, those who didn't study, those who didn't revise, and who failed, and gives them the same mark like those who passed the test and worked hard? Is that justice? Or there should be justice. They should not be treated equally, right? So, that's why there is, there is discipline, there is penalty, there is punishment. Are you following? So now, you have disobeyed Allah. You crossed the limit. You wronged yourself and you wronged others. You have to be brought to the right path. People should get their rights. So for that reason, there are only two ways. Either to be disciplined and punished and penalized in this life or in the hereafter. What is better? To be punished in this life and to clear your sins or to be thrown into Jahannam because there are two prisons you have to enter one of them no doubt no way Imam Ibn Qayyim he said every human being has to enter one of the two prisons either you have to be present here that means you are not free to do whatever your nafs wants that's why the Prophet Sallallahu said that dunya sijinil mu'min it is the prison for the mu'min because you are limited, you can't do whatever you like, or you will be present in Jahannam. So which one you prefer? No Muslim will say, I want Jahannam. So that's why whatever happens to the Muslim is rahmah, is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why the Prophet said, don't curse the fever, because it washes away the, the sins. So whatever happens to you is rahmah from Allah. I'll t give you another example. Sometimes two brothers start backbiting and all of a sudden one of them, he bit his tongue. While he was backbiting, he bit what? His tongue. That is a signal, a reminder. Two sisters in the kitchen gossiping and one of them is cutting onion and then Ay! she what? She cut what? Her finger, that is a reminder. Allah is telling her, stop it. So the Muslim will always wake up when he receives these reminders. So these texts are reminders, signals from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, wake up, come back to me, repent. Okay? Next. 
Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh, uh, when we are present in such conferences, our iman gets highlighted. It increases. But as soon as we enter our world, and for a day or two, it remains the same state. And again, when we indulge in our day to day activities, slowly and gradually we feel that what we have been before, every day it is deteriorating day by day. So, what is the thing in order to get some sort of solution, some extra benefit from it? Thank you. Alhamdulillah. I'm sure now you feel your iman, mashallah, because we said. This rahma, the jama'ah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, al jama'ah tu rahma wal furqa tu adab. Togetherness is mercy, and disunity is punishment. So the more the Muslims they get together, the rahma comes upon them. You feel the brotherhood, love, peace inside you. So how to maintain this? We should also have another group wherever we move good companions, good brothers around you, you mingle with them. I'm sure some brothers, they are here in the conference, and mashallah, they, they liked what they heard, and their iman, mashallah, uh, increased. But they have problems. They have bad friends. So the moment they go back and mingle and mix with the bad friends, they go back to square one. So my advice for everyone, get rid and stay away from the bad friends. And if you have girlfriend, don't call her. And even the SIM card, throw it away and take a new SIM card. So she cannot track you. So you have to get rid of anything that links you to the past. So inshallah, when you come out of this conference, you are a different person inshallah. May Allah strengthen your Iman and my Iman and your Iman and may Allah keep us steadfast on the straight path. Amen. Next, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is uh, Badrunissa Muhammad Siddiq Bataki. I am ex uh, principal of Bombay Girls High School. I want uh, to clear one thing from you. For Iman, you have used mathematical equation. That is, Iman is equal to a trend into conviction, into action. I want to ask, it is the product of these three components, or we can say that these are the sum of these three components. Okay, I got it. Okay. That's the reason why I put it in this uh, mathematical form. What will happen if one of the three variables, one of them is zero? What will happen to the product? Zero. Yes. So the Iman is the product of the three. So if one goes zero, Iman goes zero. So if no Salah, no Siyam, no Zakah, no Hajj, no this, and you think you are Mu'min, no. Abu Talib, he said, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ دِينَ مُحَمَّدٍ مِنْ خَيْرِ أَدْيَانِ الْبَرِيَّةِ دِينَ Abu Talib said, Verily I have known, and I know beyond any shred of doubt, that the Deen of Muhammad, the religion of Muhammad, is the best religion. But where is Abu Talib? In Jahannam. Fir'aun, Allah said about the people of Fir'aun, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْ بِهَا قُلُوبُهُمْ So they know Musa has the truth, they know that. But out of arrogance they rejected. So the Iman is not only in the heart. These three projects, if one of them goes zero, Iman is zero. Imagine a person ask Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and tell him, I know you are the Prophet of Allah, and I love Islam, and I believe that you are the Prophet, but I will not pray, I will not fast, I will not do any deed. What do you think? Prophet Muhammad will accept from him? Tell me. Absolutely not. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said, the dividing line, إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ الَّذِي بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمُ الصَّلَاةِ فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كفر. The dividing line between Islam and apostasy is the Salah. One doesn't pray, finish. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, why did he fight the Arabs when they refused to give the zakah? Murtaddin. They said, we will pray, we will fast, we'll do everything except the zakah. Abu Bakr said, no. By Allah, I will fight whoever distinguishes between the prayer and the zakah. So that is the problem. The concept of Iman 
now is erroneous, is wrong in the minds of Muslims. So we are deceiving ourselves. You find a person, he never pray one rak'ah in his life. What is this? The Sahaba, they were agreed unanimously that the leaving the Salah is kufr, disbelief, apostasy. Prophet Muhammad said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, command your children to pray at the age of what? Seven, and beat them and smack them at the age of? Ten, and don't let them mix children. Ten years, smack him if he doesn't pray. Allah says in the Quran, the angels on the day of resurrection, they will rebuke the people. مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرُ قَالُوا لَمْنَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ The angels will ask the people in the hellfire, what brought you into the blazing fire? مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرُ What brought you here? قَالُوا لَمْنَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ Because we were not paying. So Iman, my dear sister, the three components. One goes zero, no Iman. May Allah give us the Iman with all the three components and inshallah strong components. Amen. Uh -huh.